Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are doing a revision exercise of the tally and bar graph for grade 9. Now, the information goes as follows. A car dealer asks 20 customers to rank his service on a scale of 1 to 5. The results were as follows. So the table is given to us and these are the 20 people and what they had said. So some have voted 5, some had voted 3 and so on. Now when we are doing this, how do we do a tally table? Instead of going and counting to say, okay, I've got 1, 5, I've got 2, 5, I've got 3, 5, I've got 4, 5. Sometimes when the information is a lot, what you need is a tally table. Now when you're counting, let's say I'm counting 5. Then I know 5 was repeated one time, so I remove it. 3. So for every time I'm taking a number, I'm putting a stroke under that specific group. Now remember, in this one I'm using 1 to 5. But they could say, draw a tally table for colors. So maybe it's different color pins. And then we're talking red, blue, yellow, green. So the results does not always have to be a number. It can be anything. It can be your favorite ice cream, strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, caramel. The result can be anything. The tally, we count it as we're going. Then we have 4, 5 again, 4 again, 3, 4. So every time I'm striking 1, I'm putting a stroke under tally. 5, 3, 2, 2 again, 4, 5, 1, 2, 1, 4. Now look at it, right? 4, we've already got 1 stroke, 2 stroke, 3 stroke, 4 stroke. When you're doing tallies, the 5th stroke is a cut through all 4. Then we've got 2 again. We've got 4. Now we've done with 5, so we start a new group of 5. And we've got 2. Now remember, again it's 4, so the 5th one is a stroke through. So, what is our total? For one, there were two people. For two, there were five people. For three, there was three people. For four, there was five plus one, which is six. For five, there was four people. Now, you know that he had interviewed 20 customers. So, to double check, did you cover all the people? You add five plus two plus three plus six plus four. Does it give me 20? And it does. So now we have a total of 20. Now how do we go about drawing our bar graph? When you're doing a bar graph, you must use a scale. So we've got a vertical line and we've got a horizontal line. The vertical line, we're now going to mark it. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now this is the values or the total tallies that I am counting. So this is your vertical line. What you usually know as the Y values. And then the results are on your X line. Now remember your results. Again, I'm emphasizing. It doesn't need to be numbers. It could maybe be colors. It could be countries. It could be continents. It could be anything. Whatever they are discussing, it can be that. So here I'm going to look, my first group is 1, then I have 2, I have 3, I have 4, and I have 5. Again, I'm emphasizing, it could have been strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, caramel, bubblegum. It could have been anything that we're discussing. Now for 1, I go up till 2. So I'm going to draw till 2, then for 2 I went up till 5, now remember you're going to use your rulers and you are going to do it neatly with a ruler, you're not going to just 
draw free hand okay you have a ruler you use your ruler what I want you to notice is between 1 and 2 can you see there are spaces this tells me that each group is on its own it is called ungrouped data then we have 3 which is still 3 And then we have 4, that is still 6. And we have 5, that is still 4. Now, number 1, you must notice with the bar graph, there is spaces between each bar. That is important because later in grade 11 you do histograms which is no space between the graphs. So make sure you understand that between a bar graph there is spaces between each group. Now it is good to label your drawings. You need to look at it and say what are we doing? We can say we are ranking his services. So we can label this graph service. And if you want, you can say service rank. Now, when you're looking at your graph, you need to label it clearly. You need to state that these are the values, these are the names. So if it's flavors, if it's colors, you need to put it in. Here yeah, you need to put how much is the total and you usually need to allocate it a name. Now, these are other form of graphs that we have drawn. These are done by the computer. But it is nice to know how it looks. If you look at the computer graph, in this one here, they had labeled it here on the side. They had put the values. Now what they had done is they had color coded it. So you would see something like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sometimes they will give you little blocks. They'll show you a blue block and they'll say that's one or a blue block means a certain thing. Another way that they do it on the computer is a horizontal bar graph. Now this is not usually used quite often in school but to emphasize the different types of bar graphs or when they want to ask you comparisons then sometimes they do it this way to see do you understand that these are our groups and not our values. So for group 1 there was 2, for group 2 there was 5, for group 4 there was 6. So they're trying to see, can you distinguish between the values? Not for group 0, oh, it went till 1, so it's 1. Not like that. You must understand that these were our groups. But the norm is usually to do a bar graph in this way. Now, let us look at a compound bar graph. Now, when we are looking at a compound graph, what happens is the car dealer, he now asked the 20 clients, to rate him on different qualities. So the first one was the service, then the value, and the overall service. Now if you count, each group would have 20. So if you say 5 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 4 will give you 20. Because remember, he had interviewed 20 customers. If you count 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 20. And then 5, 9, 10, 12, 18, 20. So each group again has 20 people that he's interviewed. Now how do you do this graph? How is this graph different from your standard bar graph? When you're doing a compound graph, it still has an X and Y. You're still going to label it. But what is different? Let's take the first one. For 1, we had service as 2, value as 3, and overall as 5. So, we're going to have a graph for service. Service is 2. So, we're going to go up till 2. And then he's got value as 3. And he's got overall as Five. 
That was for number one. There were two people that rated his service as one. They rated the value. There were three people that rated his value as one. And overall, there were five people that rated his overall service on one. Now, for two, we've got five, five, and four. Now, look, I'm leaving a space, and then I'm going five, five, and four. Now, that was two. Then you do the same with three, so we've got three, four, three. So this was group three. These are the people that rated it three. And then for four, we've got six, two, six. So for four, that was group four. And then group five was four, six, two. Now, what I want to show you is that when we're having a compound graph, number one, the red group represented something. So what did the red do? The red told us about the service. The blue told us about the value for money. And the green told us about the overall service. Now, when you are doing these graphs, you need to inform them what each one means. Now, sometimes you don't color code them. So sometimes you'd put lines and maybe you'd put dots and maybe you put crosses. So then you would inform them. You would say, okay, for services, I got lines. For values, I've got dots. And for overalls, I've got crosses. But you have to tell them what are you doing. Also, you need to label your graph. So you're going to say car dealership. Now, the naming of the graph, you can use any name that they had used in the question. You could say car dealership or you could say a comparison of different services but as long as you label the graph also you have to put a name at the bottom to say what am I grouping it if they are discussing sometimes they're not discussing numbers as I said before sometimes they'll say okay how many children like strawberry how many children like chocolate so at the bottom you write strawberry chocolate bubble gum so you have to label it is very important that you label your graphs if you look at one that was done on the computer, this is more or less how it looks. But can you see they've told us at the bottom what each one means and then they've labeled it also and they've given us a label on the top. So when you're doing a compound graph, what is different from a normal bar graph is that they are usually grouped. Whereas in a bar graph is just one whole column, right? But what is important is that every bar graph, whether it's compound or whether it's just a standard bar graph, there is spaces between all the groups. Thank you for watching.